Well, good afternoon. Buenas tardes a todos. Let's try it again. De nuevo. Hey, it's good to be here with you. Estoy feliz estar aquí esta tarde contigo. You know, when, when I get to uh, share with the Spanish ministry, cuando comparto con ustedes en español, I, I'm always want to talk about vision. Quiero hablar sobre la visión. And, and I, I just love what God's doing in the house. Y amo lo que está haciendo Dios aquí en este lugar con nosotros, español. And, and I, I want to start by telling a story that happened many years ago. Y quiero contarte una historia que pasó hace varios años. Uh, my wife and I had been in ministry for about seven years. Mi esposa y yo llegamos en el ministerio siete años. We were uh, minister, children's pastors. Éramos at, pastores de los niños. In, in a large church in Tulsa. En una iglesia muy grande en Tulsa. And we were trying to figure out what's the next step for ministry for y estamos us. Estamos tratando de, de, de ver qué es el próximo paso para nosotros. And you know, how many of you know that God shows you one step at a time? ¿Y cuántos saben que Dios te enseña un paso a la vez? He doesn't show you the whole thing at once. No te enseña todo de una vez. So all we knew is that we're supposed to be children's pastors, I mean youth pastors. Todo lo que sabíamos que éramos ministros de los jóvenes. And we started feeling like another step was about to happen. Pero sentimos que venía otro paso. And we felt this pull towards Russia. Y sentimos un jalón sobre la Rusia. Anybody here been to Russia? ¿Quién ha ido a Rusia aquí? Okay, none of the services, no one's been to Russia. Russia. Not, not a great Rusia. place for destination. Anyway. No one de vacaciones allá Rusia. So we, we felt that we may be called to Russia. Y fuimos, que fuimos so a Rusia. Our, our church was doing a lot of ministry in Russia. Así que nuestra iglesia tenía un ministerio en Rusia. And uh, we, we took and did a mission trip with a bunch of uh, young people to to St. Petersburg. Así que nosotros con los jóvenes nos fuimos a, a San, St. Petersburg. And this whole time we're just feeling this pull to Russia. Y estamos, sentimos ese jalón hacia Rusia. And, and, and so we go into Russia and we land in the airport. Así que llegamos a Rusia, al aeropuerto. And this is an international airport. Y es un aeropuerto internacional, grande. And they had abacuses to count the luggage. Y tenían abacus para, para contar. You, anybody know what an abacus is? ¿Saben qué es el abacus? Okay, a few of you. It's like they, they have two ends to it. Tienen dos and then there's rods y bolitas, and then they had little pieces of wood on the rod con, con los, con los one para represented uh, you know numbers one through ten uno era para uno al diez, and then the tens y los dieces, and then the hundreds y los cienes. and they were counting things with moving little pieces of wood across the y thing así es como de las and, cosas que and, and I, I was completely like where are we at y pensé, ¿Dónde estamos? and then and then I mean we've been we have tremendous jet lag Así que estamos cansados por el vuelo. I'm completely tired and exhausted. Estoy muy cansado. And I've got to go to the bathroom. Y tengo que ir al baño. So this is my first time in Russia to go to the bathroom. Así que es mi primer visita al baño en Rusia. And forgive me for being so graphic. Y voy a ser un poco gráfico, así que discúlpame. But I gotta go number two. Y tengo que ir and, al número dos. And, and so I, I walk into the bathroom. Así que entro al baño. And I see stalls just like America. Y veo igual aquí con puertas. And I open up the door. Abro la puerta. And there's no porcelain. Y no hay baño, taza de baño. There's no toilet. No hay taza de baño. There's a hole in the floor. Hay un agujero en el piso nada más. And I'm thinking, God, am I called here? Y dije, Señor, estoy llamado a estar aquí yo. Then we, then we go to the hotel room. Así que vamos al hotel. And it, it only gets dark like two or three hours out of the night during the summer. And, and the curtains don't even go across the windows all the way. So you're, you're constantly trying to maneuver the curtains to get the light out. It is some of the worst food I've ever had. But yet we were saying, God, if this is your will, we'll do it. Pero decíamos, si es tu voluntad, Dios, lo and, and we were so willing to do it. Y estar ahí. I was trying to picture myself living in Russia. Yo me ver en Having a Russian church. Rusa. But as time went on, we started feeling this, like maybe this isn't it. Y más pasó el tiempo, que a lo mejor aquí so no. the second part, we went to Moscow. La segunda parte fuimos a Moscú. That, that was better than St. Petersburg, Está honestly. Estaba mejor en Moscú. And, and uh, we just, I, I sat down with my wife and I said, do you think we're called to do this? Y le pregunté a mi esposa, ¿estamos llamados a estar aquí? ¿Tú crees? And, and, and she said, no, I, I don't think we are. Y dijo ella, no, no estamos llamados and, a estar aquí. And you got to know my wife. Y tiene que conocer a mi esposa. It is not because of the facilities. No es por lo, los baños she, o demás. She's willing to go wherever God tells her ella to go. Ella está dispuesta a ir donde sea, donde But all of a sudden it just left our hearts. You know Pero what I'm talking about? Pero nuestros corazones fue And, 
And so, you know, we, we decided we weren't called to Russia. Así que decimos, no fuimos, que no fuimos I'm, llamados a Rusia. I'm really glad. Qué bueno y gracias a Dios. We went to a place where the food is incredible. Nos vinimos a un lugar donde la comida está muy buena. Here. Aquí. God. <laughs> And so, I, I, I started questioning God. Así que empecé a hacerle preguntas al Señor. I said, Señor. God, why did I have this pull to go to Russia? Y le pregunté, ¿por qué tuve ese jalón ir a Rusia, Señor? And this is what God said to me. Y eso es lo que me dijo Dios. I wanted to know, were you willing? Estaba, quería saber si te estabas dispuesto a hacerlo. God was testing my faith. Me estaba probando mi fe. God was wanting to find out would I go wherever he wanted me Quería to go. Saber si yo fuera a donde él me lleva. Even if it was a hard place. Aunque un lugar muy difícil was como was I willing to trust him? Si estaba dispuesto en confiarle a él. And today I, I, I want to take a moment I want to talk about something that I think is so important. Yo quiero tomar un momento para hablar algo que es muy importante para mí. And, I, and I'm going to veer off of what I said the last two services. Y vamos a cambiar el mensaje de los últimos servicios. And feel like what God's speaking to this group of people. Y fluir el Espíritu Santo para hablarte a, este, a ti en especial. It's talking about the condition of our heart. Hablando de la condición de nuestros corazones. See God's looking for a people with a pure heart. Está buscando el Señor gente con un corazón puro. With a tender heart. Corazón suave. With a heart after God. Un corazón que lo busca él. And, and, and I've noticed something in, in doing church. Y he encontrado algo aquí en las iglesias. When you have, when you gather a group of people together, cuando juntas a gente, it takes time to begin to change the heart. Requiere tiempo para cambiar los corazones. Because most people come to church to begin with just to see God, I, I have needs. Porque mucha gente viene a Dios y dice, yo tengo necesidades. God, Dios. My, my life is broken. Y estoy quebrantado, Señor. And, and then they, they have to learn to be able to completely submit their lives to God. Y tienen que aprender cómo someterse a Dios. See, we say it with our mouth. Lo decimos con nuestros labios. But it's another thing to live it. Pero es otra cosa it's another thing to believe it. Es and to have a heart días. that's after God no matter y tener what. Un buscando, Señor, no tus and o, over the years I've made a lot of mistakes. But there's one thing that's always been consistent. Pero una cosa es consistent, consistent My conmigo. heart has been after God. Mi siempre ha buscado, Señor. And, and we, we train a lot of ministers. Entrenamos muchos, muchos ministros aquí. And I can tell the ones that are going to be successful y puedo ver los que van a tener éxito, and the ones that aren't going to be successful. Y que no van a tener éxito. And it's, it's the difference between a, a heart that's totally after God or partly after o que God. Solamente lo busca poquito. See, Linda's heart's totally after el God. Corazón de Linda siempre, totalmente está buscando el Señor. You know, after years of watching people, you can spend a little bit of time with somebody. Después de ver a gente, puedes tomar un tiempo con nosotros un poquito mejor. And you can tell where their hearts are. Y puedes ver dónde está su corazón. But let's see. Let me tell you this. God's called each and every one of you. Pero tú dices, Dios nos ha hablado a todos aquí en este cuarto. He's called you to be a minister for Jesus. De ser un ministro para Jesús. Let me say that again. Déjame decirlo de nuevo. So we get more amens. Para que haya más amenes. God's called each and every one of you Dios a todos aquí en este cuarto, to be a minister of the gospel. Para ser un ministro para, para Jesús. That's, that's better. Let's Qué try mejor. one more time. Una vez más. God's called each and every one of you Dios a todos ustedes, to be a minister for the que gospel. Sean menú, ministro para el Evangelio. Amen. That was excellent. Now, We know that you're not all called to be in, on the stage. He hasn't called all of you to take and work for the church. <laughs> I mean, like get financially paid. He's called you to work jobs. Raise your family. And have a heart after God. And to go after the hurting and the lost. He's called each and every one of us to do that. But sometimes when we come to church, we don't understand that. Sometimes we come to church for different reasons. We come to church because, you know, we, we just want to be there and somebody minister to us. And, and some of us have all kinds of experience with church. Some of us have been hurt by church. Some of us have seen bad leadership. We've seen leaders 
leadership that's selfish and manipulative. Liderazgo que man, 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 manipula. And sometimes we even come in with a heart that we don't completely trust people. Y tenemos un corazón que no confía en la gente. I, I understand that. Yo entiendo eso. But I want you to know that this is a church that's after the heart of God. Que, que sepas y te, te aseguro que esta iglesia tiene un corazón atrás that, de las cosas de Dios. That its leaders are after the heart of que God. Que sus líderes están buscando la, a Dios. And I believe we're raising up people that are after the heart of God. Y yo creo que estamos levantando gente que tiene un corazón atrás de Dios. Amen. So, for a few minutes today, I, I want to talk about what does that look like. Por algunos minutos te quiero compartir cómo se ve eso. And, and I want to talk about Saul and David. Sobre Saúl y David. They were both kings of Israel. Ambos fueron reyes en Israel. Saul was the very first king of Israel. Saúl fue el primer rey de he, Israel. He started off right. Empezó muy bien. But he, within a short time, his heart got away from God. When he was first king, he was tender and he was sensitive after God. And then he, and then he began to pursue his own, his own way. And, and Samuel was the prophet during that time. And after one of the times that, that Saul had sinned, Después de unos peca uno de los pecados de Saúl, Samuel pulled him aside. Samuel lo hizo lado. And he said, the kingship will not, will not last in your family. Y le dijo, el reinado no durará en tu familia. But God's taken it away from you. Porque el Señor te va a quitar esto. And he's going to give it to you to another man. Y se lo dará a otro. He says, to a man whose heart is after God. Al hombre que el corazón le busca al Señor. Can I tell you that's the most important part of you? Te puedo decir que esa es la cosa más importante en ti. It's not what you look like. No, como te ves. You know, don't we love Facebook now? No nos encanta el Facebook. And especially the ladies. Especialmente Because las mujeres. Sometimes it's the guys. Bueno, you know, los hombres también que se ponen así. That was funny there. Right. I don't do that because I have no muscles to flex. No, no es así porque no tengo right. que enseñar. But you know, some of you ladies, you get all the, you know, all the makeup and you look really good. Muchas mujeres se ponen todo el maquillaje y se ponen la foto ahí bonito. Get the selfie. Y el selfie. That's great. That's fine. Eso es bueno. Eh? But that's. God doesn't care about that stuff. Pero a Dios no le importa nada de eso. See, God looks past the outward part. Él busca más adentro de ti. And he looks to the inside. Busca tu corazón. So there, there's a scripture here in, in 1 Samuel. En, hay una escritura en 1 Samuel. And, and I believe, let me see, the, the 16th the 16th chapter. El capítulo 16. And they'll put it on the screen, but I'm just going to read it and, and he'll follow with me. Lo pondrán ahí, pero vamos a seguirlo. And, and, and Samuel was called to go find a king to replace Saul. Y Samuel fue a and, a un and God told Saúl. Samuel, I want you to go to Jesse's house. And he said, I'm, we're, you're going to anoint one of his sons to be king. And, and he walks in and the first guy he sees is Eliab. Eliab is one of the guys that would be on Facebook. He's tall. Alto. He's good looking. Guapo. He's strong. Fuerte. And, and, and when Samuel sees him, he says, that must be the next king. Because he's looking on the outside. Está lo and, and God says something to Samuel that is so important. Y Dios dice algo a Samuel muy he muy says, importante. do not look at his appearance. Dice, no vea su do not look at his height. No vea su altura. Do not look at his stature. No veas que tan fuerte está. Because I rejected him. Porque yo lo rechacé. Now that's good news. Eso es buena noticia. That means if you're short and ugly, God will still use you. Amen. <laughs> look, look what God says. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance. But I look at the heart. See? Every person in this room, God sees your heart. Cada persona aquí, el Señor mira a tu he doesn't corazón. Care what, he doesn't care what you have. No importa tus posesiones. He doesn't care what you look like. ¿Cómo te ves? Let me tell you something. He doesn't care what you've done in the past. Ni lo que has hecho en tu pasado. He cares about your heart. Sino, él solamente quiere ver tu corazón. And, and, and he's looking for a heart that's after him. Y él busca el corazón tierno, tierno hacia él. And, and, and I want to look at a couple things to talk about what that heart looks like. Y quiero hablar sobre unas cosas, cómo se ve ese corazón. See, first of all, that heart is dependent on God. Ese corazón es dependiente en el Señor. 
See, in, in America, we don't like dependence, we like independence. En Estados Unidos no usa la dependencia, no usa la, la independencia. We even have a holiday to celebrate our independence. De hecho, hasta independence. la celebramos el 4 de julio. We don't have a holiday to celebrate our dependence. No tenemos un, una celebración de dependencia. Because we consider dependence as weakness. Porque vemos la dependencia como, como algo muy, muy uh, débil. But in our relationship with God, dependence is strength. Pero en relación con Dios, dependencia it, es buena. It is a heart sensitive after un God. Un corazón tierno hasta las cosas de Dios. And it looks for God to meet every problem in our life. Y busca a Dios para solucionar todo cada problema en nuestras it, vidas. It exalts His Word above all things. Exalta su palabra sobre todas las cosas. Let, let, let me give you an example of this. Te voy a dar un ejemplo. Many years ago, my son was about five years of age. Hace muchos años, mi hijo tenía unos cinco años. And after service was over, he was running around on the stage. Después del servicio estaba correteando aquí en el and, escenario. And, and I was off to the side doing something. Y yo estaba acá en el lado haciendo algo. And, and then I walked over. I'm not even looking at my son. Y yo camino para acá y no lo estoy viendo. And my son sees me. Y me ve él. And just like any boy, he takes off running. Y como cualquier otro niño, se va corriendo. And he hits the edge of the stage right here. Y aquí al fin del escenario. And he just jumps. Y brinca. And he yells, Dad! Y grita, Papá! I'm not even looking. Yo ni cuenta. I turn around to see my son heading towards me. Me doy vuelta y lo tengo aquí enfrente ya. And, and I grab him y and we agarro. both hit the floor. Y nos caemos los dos. And, and I, I'm panicking. Ya, ya estoy and I grab him. Y lo agarro. And I said, why did you do that? Por qué eso, you niño? could have been hurt. Te dañado. And this is what he said. Y me dijo esto él. He's laughing. Está risa, risa. And he goes, no, dad, you got me. Dice, no, papá, tú me vas a de todas I knew you'd catch me. Yo lo iba a Now, that's dependence. Es dependencia. Now listen. The word of God asks you in your life to jump off the stage. La palabra del Señor te pide en tu vida que brinques del escenario. Amen. I heard last week that Linda gave a great message on tithing. Escuché que la semana pasada la pastora Linda nos compartió sobre el diezmo. That means with your when you start to tithe, you just jump off the stage. Cuando diezmamos, brincamos del escenario. You don't have to understand how it's all going to work. No tienes que entender cómo va a funcionar. You trust God. Solamente confías en el Señor. When the Bible says that you're to forgive somebody who's hurt you, cuando la palabra dice que hay que este perdonar a alguien que te dolió, you don't have to understand it completely. No hay que entenderlo completamente. You don't even have to feel like it. Ni sentirte como perdonar. You just jump off the Solamente stage. Solamente brincas del escenario. When God says, "Let your purpose be all about Him," cuando dice que tu propósito solamente sea para él, you have to jump off the stage. Tienes que brincar del escenario. Let, let me stop right here. Voy a parar aquí. And, and I want to ask you a question. Entonces una pregunta. I, I wish I would have done this at the other two services. Hubiera hecho esto en los últimos servicios. What are you doing in your life right now that has eternal purpose? ¿Qué estás haciendo en tu vida que tiene propósitos eternos? It, if, you, if right now your life was ended, si hoy mu mueres, and you stood before God, y te pones enfrente del Señor, and he said, okay, what have you done for me? Y te pregunta, ¿qué has hecho para mí? What have you done for heaven? ¿Qué has hecho para merecer el cielo? What would be your answer? ¿Qué vas a contestar? So, oh, that's for pastors. No. No. Menos que seas pastor. no, that 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 is for every person on the planet. No, eso es para todos now, nosotros en now, el planeta. Now listen, I, I'm just going really completely off script here. Ahora sí se está yendo para otro lado. <laughs> and no shock. Yo sé, siempre lo hace. But do you know that each and every one of us ¿Saben will, cada uno de will stand before God? Estaremos frente al Señor. And you give an account for your life. And, and here's what it says. Es lo que dice la it says that even if you're a Christian. Creyente, even if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. A you Dios will Salvador, still give an account for your life. Vas a tomar de tu vida. And, and it says the things that don't matter in eternity. Dice que las cosas que no en la like your house. Como tu hogar, your car. Tu ca coche, your bank account. Tu cuenta de bancos. Those things that you can't take with you to heaven que no al cielo are like wood, hay, and stubble. Es como la paja. And it says that God's going to try your works with fire. 
Dice que va a ver tus trabajos bajo la lumbre. And the things that are wood, hay and stubble will be burned up. Igual que la paja se va a quemar. But the things that you've done for God will be like gold and silver. Pero aquellas cosas que has hecho como para Dios serán como el, el oro y, y God, la plata. I, I've been ministering to, to the lost in my, in my work. Yo he estado ministrando a los perdidos en mi vida. God, I, I, I've been serving in my church Se, to help those Señor, people. Señor, yo he servido en mi iglesia para servir a los perdidos. Whatever it is, that gold and silver doesn't burn up. Lo que sea, ese oro it y gets plata refined. No se, quema, se refina. And, and it becomes a treasure. Y se hace un tesoro eterno. And God says you're going to answer for that. Dios dice que te vas Now, a tener que contestar eso. I, I want to make this clear. If, you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not going to hell. Si aceptaste a Jesucristo como tu Dios salvador, no vas al infierno. It says that if all your works are wood, hay, and stubble, that you will be tried by fire. Dice que si todos tus trabajos son de paja y, y de madera, vas a ser este, and, probado and, 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 por el fuego. It says you'll make it, but as by fire. Lo harás, pero muy apenas. In other words, that's not a comfortable position. No estarás muy a gusto. Listen, can I tell you what the heart of God is? It's going after the gold and the silver, not the hay and the stubble. See, there's a saying that says this. That we shouldn't seek the hand of God, but the face of God. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me make what I think is a better statement. I think we should seek the heart of God. And then we get his hand. Because God wants to bless you. God wants to take and, and bless you and, and, and hay, wood, and stubble stuff. But he wants the gold and silver to be the most important thing Pero in your life. And, and, and let me just say this. Deja decir esto. The wood, hay, and stubble will never give you true joy and true peace. La madera y la paja it's nunca temporary te and it's fading. Es temporal the y gold se va and ir. silver is what you were made for. Pero el oro y la plata, it was what you were creado, created for. It's what satisfies you. Que te, 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 When you ti, serve other people for Jesus Christ, cuando a otra gente para Jesucristo, that's where true joy and peace comes in your heart. Entra el gozo y el júbilo. But, but it starts in being dependent on God. The, the, the next thing is to be attentive to God. Or to have an attentive heart. And what does that mean? It means you pay attention to God's things above anything else in your life. It, it means that you put the word of God above everything else. It's his letter to us. It's his direction, his way. It means you put your devotional time above God. See, thank God for church. But you can't Ever get where you're supposed to with God until you spend personal time. See, it's a relationship. Es una relación. And when you pay attention to God, y pones atención al Señor, then the things He cares about, la cosa que él, él quiere, you care about. Tú las the things He loves, la cosa que él ama, you love. Tú las And do you know what God loves? ¿Sabes qué ama el Señor? He loves people. Él ama la gente. He loves the people that are hurting. He loves the people that are lost. Ama los perdidos, that should be our heart. Eso debe estar nuestro corazón. But if we're not careful, we're not being attentive. Pero si no tenemos cuidado, our heart is soft and tender before God. Nuestro corazón tiene que estar tiernos bajo el Señor. I, I remember a time I was not attentive to my wife. Yo recuerdo una vez que no puse atención a mi esposa. In, any man that you've not, at some point in your marriage, you were not attentive. Un hombre que no le puso atención a su esposa. Okay, look around, look at all the liars. Bola de There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> my, my wife, uh, it was the eve of her 30th birthday. Fue la noche antes que 30 años, mi, mi esposa. I, I've never forget it. Nunca me voy a olvidar. And the reason I won't forget it is because we used to have a waterbed. You remember those things? Que una cama de agua. You know, <laughs> And, and anyway, and, and it got a leak that night. 
tuvo un agujero esa noche. And, and so we, we made a pallet on the floor because it was, it was a watery bed. Así que nos acostamos en el piso. And, and, and we're laying in bed. Estamos acostados en el piso. And, and my wife starts crying. Y empieza a llorar mi esposa. About her 30th birthday. Por su cumpleaños 30. But she feels old. Que se siente viejita. And, that, and, I, and I, I thought, boy, what we would give to be 30 again. Lo que diera para cumplir 30 de nuevo. <laughs> But anyway, that moment, it was sad. And... Is there any of you here that when your head hits the pillow, you go to sleep? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that way. I, I, my, I mean, I have no problem going to sleep. I, I do not struggle with insomnia. And, and so my head hits the pillow. I mean, I'm starting to go out. My me wife starts crying. Me acuesto, me estoy y a she says, mi I, I just need you. To, to talk with me for a little bit. And, and I said, okay. And she started talking. I don't remember much. No me after that. Nada más. <laughs> and I woke up the next morning. And I was fresh because I slept yo. all night. And I look over at my wife. Y veo a mi esposa. And I'm thinking, did I fall asleep? Y dije, few minutes later she woke up se levantó ella, she looked at me, me vio. I knew immediately I had fallen Yo asleep on my wife que she looked at me and I said happy birthday and she went mm, and Le went the other way y se fue. I was less than attentive no Now, do you know that we can fall asleep on the things of God? Man, we can sit in the service when the Holy Spirit is moving. And the power of God is available. And we can fall asleep. Come on, Jesus would speak to the crowds. One person would give their life to him. And, and, they, and they'd say, I'll follow you anywhere. And the person right next to them y la de él, who heard the same message que el mismo mensaje, who felt the same anointing la misma unción, will look at Jesus and say you have a devil y a Jesús y decía, Tú el it's a decision we make es una que are nosotros. we going to be attentive to the things of God Vamos a poner atención a las cosas de Dios. Let, let, let me bring you to the last thing I want to talk about today y por último, lo que quiero hablar, compartir contigo hoy. I want to talk about a tender heart un corazón tierno. I, I believe this is one of the most important things as a Christian to have. Yo creo que es una de las cosas más importantes and, como and, creyente and, and, and tener. I'm going to talk about David for a second. Y vamos a hablar de David por un minuto. And, and that, when this, this scripture I'm going to read, David is not king yet. En esta escritura David aún no es rey. Saul is still king. Saul todavía es rey. But David's anointed to be the next king. Pero este David ya está ungido Saul, para ser el próximo rey. Saul knows it. Saul lo sabe. And Saul is jealous. Y él está celoso. And Saul's trying to kill David. Y él quiere matar a David. And so Saul chases David out into the wilderness. Así que Saul persigue a David afuera de la ciudad. And the story goes that that Saul is out in the wilderness, can't find David, has got his army with him. And all of a sudden, Saul has to go to the bathroom. We're talking about bathrooms today for some reason. And he sees this cave that he can go in and use the restroom. And, and, and the Bible says that he goes into this cave to relieve himself. There's only one problem. Guess who's hiding in the cave? ¿Quién está escondido en la cueva? David and all of his men. David y todo su ejército. Saul's by himself. He's away from his army. Saul está solo. And the men of David said, "Listen, God's delivered Saul into your hand." Y los hombres de David dicen, "Ha traído Dios a Saúl." And strike him down. Vamos a matarlo. Right now, and you'll be king. Ahora mismo para que tú seas rey. Let me, let me give you a little nugget right here. Sometimes think, people pray this prayer. God, if it's your will, let all the circumstances align. If the circumstances align, then I know it's your will. That is not an accurate New Testament prayer. See, it was, it, this aligned perfectly for David to kill Saul. But, but here's what David said. 
Y eso es lo que dijo David. I will not touch God's anointed. No voy a tocar el, el ungido de Dios. God put him in that position. Dios lo puso en esa posición. That position is to be respected and to be honored. Esa posición debe ser honrada y respetada. And I will not take him out. God will have to. Y yo no lo mataré. See, Dios lo tendrá que hacerlo. You don't follow the circumstances always. You follow your heart. No siempre sigue las circunstancias. Sigue tu corazón. And then, and then David did something just to try to prove a point. Así que David hizo algo para well, probar su punto. Saul's doing his business. Mientras Saul está en el baño. David sneaks up behind him. David se le pone por atrás. And he cuts off just a corner of his kingly robe. Y le quita un poquito de su bata. And he leaves. Y se va. And what the Bible says right the next is so important. Lo que dice la palabra en sí es muy importante. And, and, and in verse 5 of 2 Samuel 24. Segunda Samuel 24. And it says, and afterwards David's heart struck him. Y después el corazón de David lo, lo, le pegó. Do you, do you know what that means? His heart revealed to him that he was wrong. It's like a strong check on the inside. And, and, and why was it wrong? Because his garment represented his position. And even just cutting a little corner was desecrating that position. And David was convicted of it. And I, I think to myself, what a sensitive heart that just touching the wrong garment convicted David. Qué corazón tan tan tierno que solamente por cortarle ese pedazo de manta le dolió a su corazón a David. No, I'm I'm going to I'm going to hit you pretty hard right now. Voy a ser algo muy fuerte ahorita. Not not physically. No físicamente. Okay. But but spiritually. Pero espiritualmente. I want you to hear this. Quiero que escuches esto. Here here's what I'm finding in the church in America. Eso es lo que veo yo en las iglesias americanas. Our hearts aren't very sensitive anymore. Nuestros corazones ya son sensibles o tiernos. See, there was a time when we got first got saved, and we pursued God with everything we had, and we read His Word all the time. That even having the wrong attitude convicted us. Even good. Even thinking the wrong thoughts convicted us. But you know what? Many of us have gone cold and callous on the inside. Pero nosotros somos fríos por dentro ya. We can sin and it doesn't even bother us. Pecamos y ya no nos molesta. See, the church should be different than the world. La iglesia debe ser diferente del mundo. The church should be on fire with the Holy Spirit. Tiene que ser el Espíritu Santo por dentro. The church should be filled with compassion and with love. La iglesia debe ser compasiva y amorosa. And there should be a holiness in the church. Tiene que estar santidad en la iglesia. That we won't live with one another out outside of marriage. Que no viviremos fuera del matrimonio juntos. We won't take in and, and hold grudges against other people. Ya tenemos rencor contra otros ya. Do you know you have to draw away from God to hold a grudge against somebody else? Sabes que te tienes que alejar de Dios para tener rencor contra persona. That if you're tight with God, you cannot hold a grudge Pero against si somebody con, else. Con Dios, apretado con Dios, no puedes tener rencor en tu vida. It's the absolute opposite of who God is. Porque es lo opuesto lo que es God lo que es love. Dios. Dios es amor. See what we need to do is begin to pray for a tender heart. Hay que orar por un corazón tierno. We need to pursue God. Hay que buscar al Señor. See we're dependent on Him. Dice somos dependientes de ti. God, we give our attentiveness to it. Que damos toda atención a ti, Señor. And that God, we want to be tender to Your heart with Your desires. Y que seamos tiernos a tu corazón, Señor, y tus deseos. See, here's my prayer every day of my life. Esa es mi oración cada día de mi vida. God, today it's not about me; it's about You. Hoy no se trata de mí, Señor, sino de ti. I submit everything to you. Te doy todo lo que soy para ti, Señor. My desires, mis deseos, my future, mi futuro, my finances, mis finanzas, everything. Todo. Everything. Todo. See, that's the place of tenderness. Es un lugar de, de ternura. And, and, and I'm going to wrap up with one final story. Y voy a terminar con una historia. See, I'm f that's the kind of church we're after. Es el tipo de iglesia que estamos buscando nosotros. I'm not looking for people who just want to come and get a little nugget from God. No que gente que venga quiera además de recibir de Dios. If that's you today, si ese eres tú hoy, I'm believing for transformation and change. Yo estoy pidiendo transformación y cambio. 
We're starting to see it in our church. Lo estamos viendo en nuestras iglesias. We're starting to see where people are hungry for the things of God. La gente quiere más cosas del Señor. The American church has been all about what can I get from God. Las iglesias americanas solamente quieren recibir lo que And we come to church and say, God, meet our needs. Venimos y lléname a mí, Señor. But we need to come to the church and say, God, what's my mission? Sino que hay que venir a la iglesia y decir, ¿qué es mi misión, Señor? What have you called me to do? ¿A qué me has hablado? What do you want me to do? ¿Qué quieres que haga yo, Señor? God, I want to be a part of this church's mission. Yo quiero ser parte de la misión I want to be a part of this church reaching out beyond these walls and reaching the hurting and the lost. Reaching the people that are struggling. Buscar aquellos que están luchando. I'm looking for people who are on fire for God. Gente que está encendida para las cosas de Dios. And you can tell the difference. Y se puede ver la diferencia. You can tell the difference when you speak. Cuando hablas. You can tell the difference when you look in people's eyes. Cuando lo ves a los ojos. The Bible says the eyes are the windows to the soul. Dice la palabra que los ojos son las ventanas para las almas. I can tell the difference the way people minister. Como la gente ministra. See, I know Linda. Yo conozco a Linda. Linda's all in. Ya está totalmente adentro. We gave her a raise this year. Le levantamos este salario hoy. She tried to turn it. Hoy. She tried to turn it down. Y no lo quiso ella. Oh, pastor, I don't need that. No me hace falta, pastor. And I'm like Linda. Y que Linda. You're worth being. You're worth what you're doing needs to be paid for and taken care of. Say that in a better way than I did. Acéptalo por lo que es lo que vales tú para nosotros por lo que estás haciendo aquí. Amen. Now, here's the beauty. Esto es la hermosura. You can get there immediately. Puedes llegar de inmediato. David would sin later on. David pecó. His heart gotten hard. Su corazón eh, se puso duro. And in Psalms 51, he, he came to God with a broken and contrite heart. En Salmo 51 viene con un corazón His hard duro. heart broke up. A quebrantado. And he came back to God. Y regresó al Señor. But I want to, I, I want to, I want to tell this final story. Pero qué decir esta última historia? So two weeks ago, I, I went to uh, Jim King's church in Austin. Hace dos semanas fui a la iglesia de Jimmy King ahí en Austin. And, and he has a church a little smaller than the Spanish service. Y tiene una iglesia un poquito más chica que esta iglesia española. And, and he, he had taken it over. The pastor had died. El pastor este and, falleció. And he was helped turning it around. Y él estaba dando la vuelta a la iglesia. And it was it was a great. We had two services. It was great. Tuvimos dos servicios. Estuvo muy bueno. And afterwards, he said to me, what, "What's what's missing in preguntó, our service?" ¿Qué está faltando en el servicio? And I said, "Oh, it's, it's great. You know, I just tried to tell him everything was great." Le quise poner cosas cara buena. Y dije, está bien todo. Then he pressed and he said, "Come on, be honest." Y luego me preguntó, "Dime la verdad." And I said, "It's your worship." Dije, "Es tu alabanza." I said they can sing and hit all the notes. Pueden cantar muy bien y tocar muy bien. They can play the instruments fine. Los instrumentos suenan muy bien. But they don't take you into the presence of God. Pero no te llevan a la presencia del Señor. And, and as soon as I said that, he goes, "That's exactly what I thought." Y diciendo eso dijo, yo es lo que pensaba yo también. So the next Sunday he's at my church. Así que el próximo domingo está aquí en la iglesia. And he's sitting right over there. Y está sentado ahí mismo. And in the second service, Olivia. At the end of worship, steps up to minister. Y el, el término de, de la alabanza, el segundo servicio, Olivia See, viene y empieza a ministrar. Our, our worship leaders have a heart for the things of God. Nuestros líderes de alabanza tienen corazón buscando al Señor. And some of them are really young. Y algunos son muy jóvenes. And, and and you don't know where they've come from. Y no saben de dónde vienen. They've come from hurt and brokenness. De quebrantados. Que from being shy. De ser muy tímidos. And God has done these incredible things in their lives. Y Dios ha transformado sus vidas. And, and at the end of the service, Olivia just slows down. Y al término del servicio, Olivia se, se para todo. No hype at all. Nada de emoción. And she just closes her eyes. Cierra sus ojos. And she begins to worship the heart of God. Y empieza a alabar el corazón del Señor. But as she's worshiping the heart of God, Así como lo que está el she corazón begins Señor. to convey the heart of God to the entire world. Congregation. What, what, what is she? Twenty-two. Twenty-two years old. Twenty-two years old. There's a thousand people in the audience. And she just begins to minister to them. I, I'm, I'm crying on the front row. I, I, I look over at at, at uh, Jim King and tears are coming down his face. And she just beautifully takes us into the presence of God. A kid five years ago that was so shy she couldn't step on stage. She could but she was afraid. Lo hacía, pero tenía miedo. And can I tell you something? She still is afraid. De hecho, aún tiene miedo. But her heart is God. You tell me to do it, and pero I'll do it. Señor, que que haga, and and when, when the worship set was over, he grabbed my arm. Y terminó, me agarró, me, me and he said, "Now that's 
worship. Dijo, Eso es alabanza. And I said, yes, and you cannot have her. Sí, y no la puedes tener, es mía. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I'm going to let Linda come up and do the altar call. But I, 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 this is what I'm believing for the Spanish service. Yo estoy creyendo para este servicio español esto. See, I, and, and, I, I, I got to say this. Come on up, Linda. I, I think the world of your pastor. Yo, yo admiro mucho tu pastor. And, and she is called to do. Come on, come on up here. She is called to do this. Y esta llamada hacer esto. And she's going to take you into a wonderful place. Y nos llevará ella a otro lugar. She's taking you a place where our heart is after the things of God. See, see, we can just we can get excited and yell. And there's a place for that. But do you know where that heart is birthed? It's not the, in the excitement of worship. No, en el, en el, en el ánimo de, de It's in the quietness of devotion with God. Sino en lo calladito de devoción con el Señor. God does a deep work inside of your Cuando heart. Cuando Dios transforma tu corazón. And you open yourself up. Y te abres completamente. And you're vulnerable. Y eres vulnerable. And you let God just begin to break up the the hard heart. Y dejas que Dios te te, te rompa tu corazón. And, let me poquito. tell you what. And, and if you'll do that, you'll begin to experience God's love like never before. Y si haces eso, vas a experimentar el amor de Dios como nunca antes. It'll swallow you up. It'll change your life. I had it happen to me. And instantly all my insecurities were gone. Because I realized how much he loved me. Do you know how much he loves you? He's worth us serving him. He's, he's worth us being dependent on him. He's worth us having a tender heart towards him and putting him above all things. I'm so excited about what God is doing in our church. What God is doing in your life. Amen. Esa palabra no podemos pensar que viene del corazón humano de un hombre. Esta palabra viene del corazón de Dios. Porque el deseo de Dios es que ninguno de nosotros se pierda. El deseo de Dios es que todos procedamos al arrepentimiento y que seamos parte de este ejército de personas cambiadas y transformadas por el Espíritu Santo de nuestro Dios. Y mire. La semana pasada yo le decía el mundo y sus placeres va a perecer, van a pasar y hoy nos lo confirma Dios. No te enfoques en las cosas terrenales porque pasan, porque perecen, enfócate en las cosas eternas, las cosas que realmente te valen, las cosas por las que realmente vale la pena pelear. Tú puedes ser feliz hoy y puedes ser infeliz mañana si pones tu confianza en las cosas de este mundo. Hoy tienes dinero, mañana no, hoy tienes belleza, mañana no. Hoy tienes dinero, tienes amigos, mañana no tienes dinero, no tienes amigos Pero cuando tú estás en Jesucristo, cuando tu mirada está en las cosas eternas Cuando te preocupas por los demás, cuando amas a los demás, cuando te apasionas por servir a los demás Tú te vuelves otro nivel de persona, no la persona natural que todos podemos ver Sino la persona sobrenatural que Dios quiere formar en ti Iglesia este es nuestro tiempo es en nuestro tiempo de levantarnos En nuestro tiempo de si te caíste Sacúdete las rodillas Levántate y vamos hacia adelante en Cristo Jesús Es un tiempo de victoria Es un tiempo de reclutamiento Porque este ejército requiere personas determinadas A pagar el precio por la causa de Cristo La mejor causa Y se lo digo ¿Sabe por qué? Porque tengo treinta y poquitos años de edad Pero yo empecé a cantar desde los siete años Y a predicar de Cristo Y hasta el día de hoy Yo volvería a pasar todo lo que pasé en el pasado Por estar en este lugar Adorando y bendiciendo el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo Incline su rostro mis hermanos Vamos a orar Señor gracias Gracias por tu palabra porque es santo Gracias porque llegas a los tuétanos Hasta las coyunturas, gracias Señor Porque solamente tu palabra Tiene el poder y la autoridad De cortar como esa espada De dos filos Señor
por donde llegue Señor por donde ajuste nuestra vida va a traer un resultado para tu honra y para tu gloria toca el corazón de cada persona que está en este lugar redarguye los padres te damos la autoridad de que tú hables a su alma a su cuerpo a su espíritu y que regresen Señor a ese primer amor que regresen Señor a servirte con un corazón determinado a buscar y encontrar tu rostro Señor tu presencia abraza uno cada uno de mis hermanos abrázalos en el nombre poderoso de tu hijo amado Jesucristo y danos la oportunidad de ser útiles para tu reino Señor te damos la honra y la gloria por siempre así con su rostro inclinado yo quisiera preguntar habrá alguna persona en esta tarde que dice sabes que yo quisiera recibir a Jesucristo como mi salvador si usted quiere recibir al Señor yo quisiera que levante su mano todos con sus rostros inclinados pero si usted quiere recibir a Jesucristo levante su mano por favor porque quiero orar por usted Dios le bendiga mi hermana Dios le bendiga mi hermano, gloria a Dios, Dios le bendiga, Dios les bendiga, Dios les bendiga, Dios les bendiga, gloria a Dios Quiero que ayuden por favor a mis hermanos que estamos de alguna manera reclutando el día de hoy hacia, hacia la eternidad Y quiero que oremos juntos iglesia, repitan estas palabras después de mí Señor Jesucristo hoy te reconozco como mi único y como mi suficiente Salvador Declaro que ya no vivo yo mas Cristo vive en mí, te abro las puertas de mi corazón, de mi casa Señor, todo es tuyo Padre, en el nombre poderoso de tu Hijo amado Jesucristo, amén y amén, gloria a Dios, demos un fuerte aplauso mis hermanos.